Hi, I'm Marissa from Twisted Throttle. As we edge into winter and the days become colder, there are a few accessories we can add to our bikes that are as welcome as heated grips. They allow you to wear lighter weight gloves when the weather is just a bit chilly and may even allow you to ride comfortably in temperatures where you might otherwise take the car. The combination of heated grips and hand guards can make winter riding on adventure bikes like this Tiger 800 genuinely enjoyable. For this Tiger 800, we're using the Oxford Heaters Premium Grip System. The Oxford line has three models suitable for street and adventure bikes, the Tour, the Sport, and the Adventure. While these have slightly different grip patterns, the important difference is length. The Adventure is the longest, measuring 5.2 inches end to end, and can be trimmed to 4.8 inches. The Sport is next at 4.8 inches, trimmable to 4.5, and the Touring, which is 4.7 inches long, trimmable to 4.4. When you measure your stock grips, it's important to take into account any features on the bar or throttle tube that might cause interference. You don't want the grip to take up the entire distance between the switch housing and the bar ends or the handguard frames. There should be a small gap so that the throttle tube turns freely. That's why we chose the shorter touring model for this Tiger. Before we watch our veteran technician Dave start the installation, let's take a look at a quirk of the Triumph that you might have to address on your bike. The Oxford heated grips are designed to be installed on a 7 8 inch bar and conventional throttle tube, which is typically 1 inch in diameter. Most motorcycles are like that, but the Triumph has an unusually large throttle tube under the original grip. That's why before starting any of the work, Dave has to get the Dremel tool off the shelf and trim away much of the plastic throttle sleeve. He's going to work slowly from the outside inward so he doesn't go too far and make the tube too small. You should do the same by trimming a little and test fitting as you go. Throttle side grip should be reasonably firm fit. It shouldn't take a big hammer to put on, nor should it be noticeably loose around the throttle sleeve. Another quirk of the Tiger is that the non-throttle side grip is carried on a plastic sleeve as well, so it's a matter of loosening the screw and removing the grip. On most bikes, you will just slice the grip off. There are a couple of other mechanical considerations before we start the wiring. If there's any glue remaining on the bar or throttle tube, clean it off with contact cleaner or alcohol. Now find the grip glue in the packaging and apply a small amount to the left side bar and slide the new grip on. Have a plan for where the wire on the inboard side will go and aim for that as the grip gets fully seated. You want the cable to be out of the way of the clutch lever and switch gear. Generally, we try to aim the wire down and back so that the harness can be tied off to the switch cluster. On the throttle side, take extra time to determine where the wire should come out. You need a little bit of slack for the movement of the throttle, and you should feel confident that the wire won't get in the way of the brake lever or anything else at idle or full throttle. Once you have the location worked out, install the throttle sleeve on the bike, lightly apply the grip glue, and push the grip on. Now it's time to mount the controller. Oxford's grips have a bracket designed to bolt to the existing switch cluster, but the controller's flat back gives you other options, such as using the double-sided tape to stick to a flat surface. On this Tiger, we've elected to use a different switch mounting bracket because it fits better with the light switch already on the bike. In case you're interested, this is a double switch mount for Denali LED lights. Okay, with the grips and controller installed, begin routing the wires towards the center of the bike. Tidy up as you go and find the most direct path you can to the battery. Generally, we prefer to connect accessories to a switch power source so they can't draw any power without the motorcycle running. However, the Oxford system has a smart controller that monitors battery voltage. If you forget to turn the grips off when you stop the bike, it's not the end of the world. Below a certain voltage, the Oxford grips will turn themselves off before killing the battery. The last few steps involve connecting the harness to the battery and double checking that the controller is getting power. After that, turn the system on and verify that the grips are getting equally hot. From there, it's a matter of cleaning up the wiring harness and tying off to keep the wires away from moving parts and anything hot. Okay, now that you've got heated grips, you can tackle that fall or winter ride in comfort. Visit our store at twistedthrottle.com to see the full line of Oxford heated hand grips. Hit us with any questions in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe to our channel to see all of our new videos as soon as they're out.